Today's objective is squares and square roots. So let's just talk about what a square is. A square, by definition, has sides with the same measurement. So here, for example, we have a square, and we know it's a square because the sides are the same, 5 inches, and the angles are 90 degrees. That's what the little indicator is. So when we find the area, we multiply the two sides together. And for all squares, it's just one of the side measurements times itself, or squared. So if I were going to write down the formula to figure out how to find the area for this, I would say, this isn't the formula, this is the math. Area equals 5 times 5. But remember from our exponent work that we can rewrite that as 5 squared. And so I could call this a equals 5 to the second power or a equals 5 squared. And that's why the second power is also called squared because it all came back to finding the area of a square. So we are going to write down the list of the numbers 1 through 25, and there are actually a few more, squared. So I'm, I'll talk a little bit slowly, see if you can write it as we go, or you can pause. But the more numbers, you already know a bunch of these, and the more that you can memorize, it will help you, you won't have to do with multiplication. I'll tell you the ones afterwards that are the most common. All right, so you know, and so everything I'm gonna say 1 times 1, 2 times 2, and then I'll start saying squared. All right, so 1 times 1 is 1, 2 times 2 is 4, 3 times 3 is 9, 4 squared, 16, 5 squared, 25, you know all these, 6 squared, 36, 7 times 7, 49, 8 squared, 64, 9 squared, 81. And if you are looking at a multiplication table, these are the numbers that go diagonally down the center of the multiplication table. All right, 10 times 10 or 10 squared, 100. Now those you automatically know. Now these, some of them you know. Okay, 11 squared, 121. 12 squared, 144. Now 13 squared, a way to, I remember that, is it's 169. And the numbers, if you ignore the ones, they count up, 369. So you can remember 13, it goes 369. Now 14 squared, these numbers switch places, so it's 196. Okay, there's a way to remember 13 squared and 14 squared. 15 squared is 225. That one comes in handy. And 16 squared is 256. That comes in handy. 17 squared is 289. That comes in handy too. Now. I'm going to go through and tell you the ones that I know that we use a lot, and then I'll go back and use a calculator and figure out the ones that we don't, just so you have a complete list. So I don't remember these two um, off the top of my head. I think I know what they are, but I'm going to check on the calculator. But 20 squared, whenever you have a, a whole number and then a zero, you multiply the whole number, and then whatever the power is, that's how many zeros. No, that's not true. You multiply the whole number and then add two zeros. So two times two is, you actually would add the number of zeros that are in the problem. So 20 times 20 would have two zeros. So two times two is four, and then two more zeros. All right, I want to tell you something pretty cool about 21. Do you notice 21, the numbers are reversed from 12? Instead of one, two, it goes two, one. Well, the answer of 21 squared is the same as these numbers reversed. 21 squared is 400. 41, and one, 12 squared was 144, so the numbers, we just flip them around for those. doesn't work for everything, but it does work for 13 and 31. Okay, 22 squared I don't remember, 23 and 24 squared I don't remember, but 25 squared is the same as, I'm going to write this, 5 to the 4th power, which is 625. Okay, now going back to our rule of 20 squared, 30 squared would be 900. What would 40 squared be? 
Think of 4 squared and add two zeros. 1,600. 50 squared, 5 squared, 25, add two zeros. 60 squared, what's 6 squared? Add two zeros, and thankfully I'm stopping. So let's go do the math for this on the calculator. So 18 times 18 is 324. Now we don't use those this as often. Okay, 19, oopsie, sorry. 19 times 19 is 361. Okay, 22 times 22, 484. 23 times 23, 529. And what's um, 24 times 24 is 576. Let me just do that again, double check. And what's pretty cool is, is 20, I'll write this in, I'm going to erase the 5 to the 4th because another cool one. 26 squared is 100 more than that, 676. That's pretty cool, huh? Okay, so squared numbers are just the number times itself. So the numbers we just calculated are called perfect squares because they are the product of whole numbers or integers, which we'll talk about in a minute. And you can find the square root of perfect squares by thinking what times itself is this number, all right? But you need to remember that negative times negative equals positive. So your square root could really be a negative or a positive number. Example, what are the two square roots of 49? Well, 7 times 7 is 49, and negative 7 times negative 7 is 49. So the answer to what are the two square roots of 49 is 7 or negative 7. But in math, we've thought of a way to be more efficient so we don't have to write the number twice, twice the 7s twice. And we say this symbol, plus or minus 7, which means, I'm going to show you over here, this symbol with a plus and a minus underneath means positive or negative. So it means two numbers, but you know how we are so efficient in math, we don't want to have to write it twice. We just write the sign, the positive, the negative, and then the number. So here's some more examples. Let's find the two square roots of the following numbers. So what would the two square roots of 36 be? Positive 6 or negative 6? So we're going to write plus or minus 6. How about 121? positive or negative 11. 289, we actually use this number a lot when we're doing um, the Pythagorean theorem. Positive or negative 17. And you can kind of remember that because it goes 7, 8, 9. That's kind of cool. How about 400? Square root of 400? Well, it could be positive 20 times positive 20, or it could be negative 20 times negative 20. Do you remember what this is a perfect square of? hopefully since it was about a minute ago, plus or minus 21. And what about 196? What's the, what are these numbers reversed from? Well, this would be positive and negative 14. Another way to write school square root is with the radical symbol. This is called a radical. And the number under the radical is called the radicand, but we'll spell that later. So here we would say, what is the square root of 9? Now this is just asking you one question, and this is a positive because we know if it doesn't have a negative in front, it's positive. So the square root of 9 is 3. So I'm not asking for both square roots this time. Now this says what is the opposite of the square root of 3, and this would give us negative 3. Isn't that a little weird, huh? So if you have a square root symbol and you're trying to find the answer, this just means positive, okay? If it if you're not solving an equation, this just means positive. So the square root of 81, 9. The opposite of the square root of 81, though, we would write negative 9. Let's do two more. Square root of 25, 5. What's the opposite of the square root of 25? Well, what's the opposite of 5? Negative 5. That's it for squares and square roots.